Tashtile. So today in this class we are going to discuss about class 12 geography part 1. So in class 12 geography we have two books part 1 and part 2. So from part 1 here I am going to uh, teach you about chapter number 8. So name of the chapter is transport and communication. So in this chapter we are going to learn about two main topics transport and communication. So if you look at this chapter most of the topics that we are going to learn in this chapter is related with transport and uh, at the last we are going to learn little bit about communication. So first thing is we need to know the meaning of transport. So what is meant by transport? So transport it is transport is a facility or a service. So if we say transport as a facility or service, so if we look at the images here, if we look at the first image, in order to carry goods and passengers from one place to another places, we need airplanes and airport. We need vehicles like buses and road. We need locomotive trains and railway tracks. We need seaports and we also need uh, this one uh, ships in order to uh, carry goods and passengers likewise we need pipelines so usually pipelines are mostly used for transporting liquid and uh, gaseous type of materials from one place to another place so all these are the facilities all these are the services with help of these facilities we can carry or transport goods and people from one place to another place. So that is called transport. So next we are going to learn about the means and mode of transport. So in this chapter, the main theme of the chapter is about the means and modes of transport that we are going to learn one by one. So if you look at the first one, we are going to learn about land transport. So in land transport, we have three types, roadways, railways and pipelines. And if we look at the second one, water transport, it is further divided into two inland waterways and ocean waterway. And lastly, we are going to learn about air transport. So this is the main theme of the chapter. So from uh, this chapter, we are going to learn about land and water transport one by one. So next to that, we need to know what is mean by transport network. So if we say transport network means several places or nodes. So if we say nodes, here means towns and cities of the world. So towns and cities of the world are joined or linked together by a series of routes. So here route we can say railways and roadways are called road. So uh, to form a pattern or pattern we can say or a connectivity or a network. So that is called transport network. So if we look at the image of India, this is the uh, railway map of India. If we look at this map, we have dotted one. So these are called nodes. Cities like Delhi, uh, this one, uh, Delhi, Lagno, all these are, uh, this uh, Shirnagar, all these are nodes, we can say node and all the lines are called routes. So all these lines represent what? Railways in India. So these nodes are linked by railways. So it will give a pattern or a network or a connectivity. So that is called transport network. So if we talk about uh, geography in cartography in GIS, we are using three data. So they are point, line and area. So these are the three main data that we are using in geography or in GIS in order to make maps. So uh, in order to make maps, uh, this one. So if we talk about India's boundaries, all these boundaries are made up of uh, areas or polygons. And if we talk about lines here, railways, all these are made up of lines with different colors. And if we talk about the dot, these are these represent cities. So 
in GIS, we are using these three main data in order to make maps. So this is about transport networks. Transport network means several. So generally, most of the railways and roadways are constructed in order to link towns and cities of the world. And if we connect, uh, if we link towns and cities by different roadways and railways, it will give a connectivity. All the cities and towns in India are connected to one another by railways or roadways. So it will give a pattern or connectivity that is called transport network or uh, this one we can say transport connectivity. We can also say like this. So this is about transport network. Next, we are going to learn about traffic flow. So what is meant by traffic flow? So traffic flow means movement of vehicles on a particular road. So if we look at image, image 1 and image 2, these are the two different roads, two particular roads. So road 1 and road 2. So if we look at these two images, we have we can see number of vehicle is different. If you look at the first image, we have more number of vehicles on a road. And if we look at the second image, we have very less number of vehicles on a road. So that is called traffic flow. Traffic flow means movement of vehicle on a particular road. So if we have more number of vehicles on the road means we have more traffic flow. If you have less number of um, movement of vehicles on a particular road means we can say less traffic flow. So that is this is about traffic flow, meaning of traffic flow. So traffic on road has increased rapidly in recent years. So that means the traffic problems so number of vehicles on a road has increased in a recent year. That means uh, from uh, 1990s or 2000 onwards, the number of vehicles on a road has increased in a very rapid manner. So traffic on the road had increased in a rapid manner. How this traffic rate rapid increase means in the world, number of road remains same but there is a huge increase in number of vehicles on the road. So it ultimately lead to traffic problems in towns and cities of the world that we can also see in other the world, there is an unprecedented or unparalleled increase in number of vehicle on the road and increase in number of roads in the world. So there is a high increase, large increase, huge increase in number of vehicles on the road and there is a less development of roadways in the world because of that it lead to traffic problems in the world so in the mostly the traffic problems are mostly facing in towns and cities of the world so city roads suffer from chronic or unending unending traffic congestion so most of the mostly in developing countries they are facing traffic related problems because of more number of vehicles and less development road development so the traffic in a, uh, in a day is not facing throughout the day. The traffic in a particular city or town, they are facing uh, in a specific time. So they are divided into two. So peak hour or high point or rush hour. So we can say if we look at this image, we have a clock. So in that clock, we have a dark shaded one. So light dark shaded one. So this particular uh, time from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. that period that time in a day is we can call it as a high point or rush up. Why means because during that time maximum number of people are the maximum number of vehicles are on the road. Why means most of people are moving from their houses or home to the offices or workplaces and many people are moving from this uh, from the, during that time they are moving to schools and colleges. Because of that, we have maximum number of vehicles on the road. Because of that, these time, these time are we can call it as a high point or a rush up. And again, if we say low point means from 11 to 4 p.m. From 11 to 4 p.m. From 11 to 4 p.m. We have less number of vehicles on the road. Why means most of people are settled in the office and in the, uh, students are settled in the schools and colleges. So that means less number of movement of people and vehicle on the road. Because of that, these periods are called trough or low point of traffic flow. Again, from 
4 p.m. to 6 p.m. we have we can say as a high point or rush hour period. Why I mean during that time most of people are coming back to their respective homes from offices, schools and colleges. So that period is called again called high point or uh, rush hour period. So this is about traffic flow. So in order to minimize the traffic related problems in the world, we have some remedies mostly in the urban areas of the world urban transport solutions or remedies for traffic congestion so flowing are the four main solutions or remedies in order to uh, minimize the traffic problems in towns and cities of the world so the first uh, solution is about higher parking fees so if you look at image 3 this is a parking place so we have to charge higher parking fees for private vehicles so if you look at this particular uh, parking place we have a large number of vehicles in here so most of these vehicles belongs to a private people and the most of these vehicles are private vehicles so we have to charge higher parking fees or we have to make higher parking fees for these private vehicles so if we make higher parking fees for private vehicles means it will ultimately the private people these people may think their expenses so few people they will in uh, instead of going by their own vehicle they will go by the private uh, this uh, public transport system they will move by public tra public transport system that means it will lead to and uh, decrease in number of road vehicles on the road that means we have to make higher parking fees for um, mostly for private vehicles in order to discourage them to drive private vehicles during peak and, peak and rush hour. Next is we have to make mass rapid transit or we can say mass rapid trans transport systems like Delhi Metro. So mass means many. So if you look at image 5, this is one metro station in Delhi. So this particular metro station, if you look at the image, thousands of people are gathered here waiting for the train in a queue they are waiting for a metro train in Delhi so that means large in Delhi metro this particular and uh, metro can move large number of people in a one trip so that is called mass rapid means very fast transit means we can say one place to another place or we can say from one station to another station so this is the mass rapid transit means if a uh, um, Delhi uh, for example Delhi Metro it is capable for carrying thousands of people on one go and in a very rapid manner from one station to another station and in every station we have different entry and exit point in different directions so that is the idea of mass rapid transit in order to minimize the traffic problems in metropolitan cities of the world mass rapid transit system next third one we need to improve the public bus services so public bus services means we have to improve the public bus services such as cleanliness cleanliness of the buses we have regular interval of the buses and other site amenities we have to improve public bus uh, uh, public bus services so if we improve these public bus services means it will encourage people to move in public uh, uh, transport systems and it will ultimately uh, minimize the number of private vehicles on the road and the third fourth one is we need to make expressways so if you look at image 4 this is expressway an expressway in this particular road we can drive a vehicle without any much obstacles why means in this road we have a uh, uh, this one different characteristics like this road we have more number of flyovers bridges and we have subways this is image number one represents subways so we have to make more expressways with more flyovers bridges and subways in order to minimize the traffic related problems in towns and cities or urban areas of the world so these are the four remedies 
suggested, suggested by different scholars in order to minimize the traffic related problems mostly in towns and cities of the world. So this is uh, the uh, type of expressway. We have lots of bridges, flyovers. So if a particular uh, vehicle is moving on a particular road means this particular uh, uh, movement of that particular vehicle will not obstruct the other movement of other vehicles. So such roads we need to construct it in mostly in towns and cities in order to minimize, in order to elevate the traffic related problems in towns and cities of the world. So from so as I already told you that from this chapter we are most mostly we are going to learn about the means and mode of transport one by one. So from means and mode of transport first we are going to learn about the land transport so from land transport first thing is we are going to learn about the highways so we have different types of road like right? roadways we have different types roads such as highways state road border uh, border road village road so we have different types of road so in this chapter we are not going to learn about other roads other types of road we are going to learn about two types of road here highways and border road so first thing that we are going to learn here from land transport is highways so what is meant by highways highways are the metal road concrete so those roads which are constructed with tars and cements these are called metal road or pakka road so these image shows kacha road and metal road so all the highways in the world are of what type means metal road and these routes are mainly for connecting far away places or distances place distance place so these type of roads are called highways so in this chapter we are going to learn first we are going to learn about the highway so we know that we have different types of road right highways village road border road and uh, this one state highways we have different but here we are going to learn about highways only so as compared to other types of road, what are the special features or characteristics of or the importances of highways in the world? So as compared to village road or border road, highways are unobstructed vehicle movement for long distance. So if we talk about this highway, this highway, these are the highways. So these, these highways have uh, unobstructed vehicle movement for long distance unobstructed means um, there is uh, not much traffic uh, there is not much traffic in, the, in this road we have more flyovers subway bridges so we can move a particular or we can drive a particular vehicle uh, with the maximum number of speed in order to cover up a long distance so that is called unobstructed vehicle movement because of this road we have uh, more flyovers and subway bridges and this road we have 80 meter width width meters in width with separate traffic length so if you look at this image from here to here we have 80 meter width 80 meter width with separate traffic lengths so here the vehicles are moving from opposite direction these vehicles are coming down and these vehicles are moving moving on opposite direction so if you look at these vehicles this is first lane this is second lane this yellow line shows lane one lane two lane three lane four lane five lane six likewise we here also we have lane six so all these vehicles are moving uh, uh, coming down and all these vehicles are moving on opposite direction so that means it has 80 meter width 80 meter width from here to here and with separate traffic lanes and these types of road we have more bridges and more flyovers and subways in order to uh, have a unobstructed vehicular movement for long distance and these types of road we have a dual carriage system so if we look at dual carriage means here six vehicles move uh, six vehicles on a row can move down and on a different end can move down and here again six vehicle on a different end they will move upward on an opposite direction and here we have separate traffic lane so here i have made one 
blue line so this particular line shows a divider so this particular divider divide the vehicle moving on opposite direction so these are the some characteristics or features of highways as compared to other types of road so in this chapter we are going to learn about the some of the important highways of the world so first highway that we are going to learn is trans canadian highway that particular highway links so here victoria vancouver to st john city so this particular red line shows trans canadian highway so this to in this particular highway trans canadian highway connect vancouver west coast of canada to st john city as east coast of canada so this is one important highway in northern america next so this is the map in and this is the map of trans canadian highway in north america so if we say north america means we have many three big countries canada united states and mexico so this particular red line shows trans canadian highway in canada next highway important highway in america is the pan american highway so what is meant by pan america so pan means we can say whole or all america means whole of america so this particular roadway that connects north latin america or central america with south american countries so this particular roadway links whole of america because of that this is called trans pan american highway so this particular highway connects north Am south america uh, central america usa and canada because of that this is called trans canadian trans pan american highway next in australia we so next highway that we are going to learn is from australia so in australia we have one important highway so the name of the highway is called transcontinental start highway so this particular highway connects driving driving at the north and melbourne at the south so these are the some of the in between or intermediate stations of these two terminal stations two terminal station means darwin and melbourne are terminal or end stations so in our textbook they have mentioned tenant creeks and ally springs so these are the tenant creeks is here one important city places or station and ally spring another important intermediate station so this is about the uh, trans Continental Start Highway in Australia. So next, if we move to Russia, in if we talk about Russia, we have dense highway network is developed in industrial region of west of Ural Mountains. So if we talk about, if we look at here, here we have a dark blue line. So this particular line indicates a mountain range. So the name of the mountain range is called Ural Mountain. So this particular Ural Mountain divides Russia into two parts moscow western uh, european russia with Siberian russia so uh, in russia most of the highways are developed in west of ural mountain this region we have more number of or more density of highways as compared to Siberian russia so here moscow is the hub hub means most of the highways or roadways are connected to moscow in the west of ural mountain so in, if you talk about Russia, we have one important highway. So the name of the highway is called Moscow Vladivostok Highway. Moscow Vladivostok Highway. So this is Moscow and this is Vladivostok. So these are the two important terminal or end stations of this particular highway. So we already studied about the highway from uh, roadways. We discussed about the highways. So we already discussed the meaning of highways characteristics of highway and some of the important highways of the world so the next type of road that we are going to learn a little bit about is border road so what is mean by border road so those roads which are along the international boundaries are called border road so if we talk about india we can say land to land boundary india shared with land to land boundary with pakistan china nepal bhutan and myanmar bangladesh so along these international boundaries we have roadways so all these roadways are called border road so this border road 
in India we have one organization so the name of the organization is called border road organization this particular organization is responsible for constructing the roadways border roads in India roadways along the border regions of India so during winter time bro we can say border road organization is responsible for clearing the snows on border roads in order to have a um, uh, in order to uh, make these uh, sunak covered road into a moderable one and one what is the importance next is what is the importance or significance of border road means it is uniting or integrating the role of people those people who are living near the border region with major towns and cities of that particular area so this is about the border road so next we are going to learn about railways so in the world the first railway of the world that started in 1825 in england so this map shows england a particular red line show england in 1925 the first train in the world started in 1825 in northern england between two cities in england stockton to darlington stockton to darlington so this particular arrow shows stockton to darlington in northern england so types of railway gauges or tracks so if we look at this image we have a railway track so this is called width of the railway track or we can say railway gauge so in the world we have four main types of railway tracks or gauges width of the tracks so we have broad gauge that is 1.5 meter in between these two we have 1.5 meter standard means in this the width of this railway track is between 1.44 meter and meter gauge means 1 meter width is 1 meter and other smaller gauges in the world we have these are the different types of railway gauges in the world but if we talk about england united kingdom in uk united kingdoms means these in uk we have different kingdoms right kingdom state countries so in uk all the railway tracks are standard that means 1.44 if you talk about india we have three types of railway coaches right broad meter and narrow coach but in uk all the railway tracks are in same uh, width that is standard coach so in roadways we learned about the highway same as in railways we are going to learn about transcontinental railways same as highways so what is meant by transcontinental railways so transcontinental railways means so those railway line that connects the two end point of a particular continent or a country it is called transcontinental railways so if we look at this image this is the map of australia political map of australia so this particular railway uh, red line shows a railway line in australia so that particular railway line two end of a Australia end point of Australia one end point of Australia to another end point of so such type of Long distance covering railway lines in the world are called transcontinental railway. So these railway lines they are moving One end point of a continent to another end point of a continent. So in this chapter again, we are going to learn about the some of the important long distance covering railways so these railway lines are called or services are called transcontinental railway so first we are going to learn about the trans siberian railway line so it connects western european russia with siberia so we already know that so this is the map of trans siberian railway line so this particular mountain range divide the russia into two parts right uh, european russia with siberian russia so this particular railway line connects european russia with siberian russia Railway route of Russia that particular railway line runs from St. Petersburg to Vladivostok while passing through many in between stations. So, in the map, we can see this. So, this particular railway line runs from St. Petersburg west to Vladivostok at east. So, these are called two inter terminal stations or end stations. So, these are two end stations. So in between stations such as Moscow, Chita, these are the in between stations. Next, 
this railway line is the longest railway line so which is the longest railway line in the world means trans siberian is the longest railway line in the world and total kilometer length of this railway line is called 9332 kilometer and it has a double tracked and electrified transcontinental railway line in the world so this is the double track one railway moving upward means one moving uh, one railway will come down to and move to on it move to an opposite direction and electrified so this is electrified this is electrical and uh, this one engine so uh, we have three types of engine railway stream or diesel engine stream and diesel engine and electric engine so these are called electric engine so this particular trans siberian railway line is a longest railway line with double track and electrified train this type of facility electricity uh, we have uh, the, in this railway line we can run ele electric engine uh, engine uh, railways also so the main objective of building this transcontinental railway line initially it's mainly for political reason in order to unify sovereign russia with uh, european russia but nowadays they are mostly used for economic purpose for transport of goods raw materials from one place to another places so main types of goods that are transported through with help of these railway lines are machinery goods industrial products coal woods petroleum and other agricultural uh, related products from east to west russia so east and west russia is divided by a mountain ridge that is called ural mountain right so this is about the trans siberian railway line next trans canadian pacific railway line so it runs from halifax in the east halifax in the east halifax in the east so this is halifax and vancouver at the south so these are called two end stations or terminal station of this particular railway line the total length of this railway line is 7050 km from vancouver to halifax initially again this is made for political reason to unite uh, the east and west canada but nowadays they are mostly using this railway line for economic purpose transport of goods raw material from one place to another places and again one more of the significances of this railway line is it's connect the quebec montreal industrial region so here i have made one uh, this one uh, Cycle. so in between we have quebec and montreal so here in if you talk about um, canada most of the industries are located in this region so that is called industrial region so this particular railway line connect this industrial region so here they they are this particular railway line helps to move the raw materials and industrial goods from one place to another place so what type of goods they are transporting means wheat meat are important export they are exporting from one place to another places so this railway line is longest in north america and in canada next australian transcontinental railway line so this particular railway line move from perth on the west perth on the west perth on the west so this is perth on the west and sydney at the east so these are called two terminal or end stations of this particular railway line so this railway line is longest railway line in australia so in between stations such as calgary forest port acosta broken hills and these are the some of the important in between stations or cities of this particular railway line again this main objective is to political reason this constructed because of political reason in order to unify western Rush, uh, australia with eastern australia but nowadays again this is mostly using for economic reasons so this is longest railway line in australia so here this particular railway line connects two seaport cities they are port perry and port acosta so these are the two seaports these two seaports are connected by this railway line in australia so these two seaports are located in a gulf gulf means uh, a particular water body covered by uh, land on its three sides opposite to peninsula so the gulf is called gulf of spencer here we have two seaports so these two seaports are connected by this particular railway line that is australian transcontinental railway line so these so we have finished roadways and uh, railways now next we are going to learn about water transport so what is meant by water transport so water transport means when the carriage of goods and passengers 
are done on water bodies such as rivers, lakes and canals and oceans. These are called water transport. So water transport is further divided into two. There are inland waterways and ocean waterways. So inland means inside the land we have water bodies such as mostly rivers and lakes. So in lakes and rivers if we navigate on these water bodies means these are called inland waterways and if, next one is open sea waterways if we navigate on open sea via big vessels then it is called ocean waterways so here we are going to learn about uh, some of the important sea ways or waterways of the world ocean waterways of the world first we are going to learn about the ocean waterways so first one is we are going to learn about the north atlantic sea route so this particular red line shows north atlantic sea route this line shows north atlantic sea route this particular line shows north atlantic sea route so why we can say not means so here we have equator here we have atlantic ocean so north of equator is called north atlantic ocean south of equator is called south atlantic ocean so because of that this particular sea route lies at the north of equator because of that it is called uh, north atlantic sea route so this sea route is also called big trunk route why means it is the busiest oceanic route of the world about 25 percent of the world international trade moves on this road that means out of 100 25 percent of international trade is moving through this sea route that means and there is a maximum number of uh, uh, ships are moving from one place to another place from this sea route because of that this is the big town route or the busiest sea route in the world this particular sea route not Arctic sea route it links northeastern part of USD, USA, Canada, and Western European countries. So this particular uh, waterway connects two highly developed uh, countries of the world. So the main port from European side are Glasgow, London in England, Rotterdam in Netherlands, and Andrip in Belgium, Le Havre and Brodex in France. So these are the important seaports from this side. So seaports are uh, we need seaport in order to um, loading for the loading and unloading purposes, storage purposes. Because of that, seaports are very very necessary. And from this side, important uh, seaports such as uh, Quebec, Montreal in Canada, Boston, New York, and Baltimore in USA. So these are the some of the important seaports both from this side next we are going to learn about the cape of good hope oceanic route so this particular ocean waterway connects so this particular red line shows uh, cape of good hope oceanic sea route so this particular sea route connects western european countries western african countries why crossing we have cape town here we have seaport because of that that it is it has named as cape of good hope sea route and it also connect with south american countries so it connect western european countries west africa while passing through cape of good hope in south africa to south american countries so as compared to north atlantic sea route this uh, sea route is less traffic means less movement of ships on this particular sea route because of that less traffic on this particular sea route as compared to North Atlantic sea route because North Atlantic sea route the busiest sea route maximum number of 25 percent of international tech takes place in North Atlantic sea route next we are going to learn about the shipping canal so what is meant by canals canals are the man-made way waterway channels so this is the canal this canal is made by human being in order to navigate from one place to another place so in this chapter we are going to learn about the two important shipping canals in the world they are Swiss and Panama Canal so Swiss Canal so this particular Swiss Canal is constructed in Egypt so this particular canal is in Egypt so this is Egypt map of Egypt so between two seaport port Seed and we have port switch so these are the two end seaports of this particular sea route so why this sea 
the canal is um, uh, this, this this particular canal is constructed you know to, to connect two water bodies mediterranean sea and red sea so in order to uh, in earlier these two water bodies are not connected to one another so uh, the government of egypt had constructed this particular canal in order to connect uh, mediterranean sea with uh, red sea Significances: It reduces the direct sea route from Liverpool to Colombo as compared to Kebab Kutuhab, Oshinigro. So, here I have made two lines. This is called, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, blue line. This this particular blue line shows here we have uh, this Swiss canal is here, Egypt in Africa, Egypt. So this particular canal is constructed in order to connect Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea here. So, before the construction of this canal, if we want to move goods from Liverpool in England to Colombo in Sri Lanka, we have to go through this red-lined sea route. So, after the construction of this particular canal, it has reduced the direct sea route from Liverpool to Colombo as compared to this uh, red-lined sea route, Cap of Good of Sea Route. So this is the significance of this particular sea route. It reduced the direct sea route from Western European country in Liverpool, Liverpool in England to Colombo in uh, Sri Lanka. So that is the significance or the importance of this particular canal. So it is a sea level canal. So this particular sea level canal and uh, land total land from Port Said to Sweet is 160 kilometer and depth is about 11 to 50 meter in depth about in every day 100 ships move from port said to switch switch to uh, port said and each ship usually on an average it takes 10 to 12 hours to cross this particular canal from said to port said to switch and switch to said and again a navigable river nile also join in an uh, city to this particular canal the name of the city is called Islamia in this particular canal. So River Nile also joins in this canal. And this particular River Nile provides fresh water to this canal. Disadvantage is since this canal is constructed by uh, Egypt government, they are charging huge traffic tolls if we want to move from this through this sea route. So because of that, uh, sometimes if the time is not a matter for moving goods from one place to another place so they are going by old sea route in order to avoid the heavy toll tax from Swiss canal so this is about the Swiss canal so the next we are going to learn about the Panama canal so this particular canal uh, Panama canal constructed in order to connect <coughs> Atlantic Ocean in the east and Pacific Ocean in the west so here we have, this is the map, but uh, the route of uh, Panama Canal. So this particular canal is constructed in order to connect Atlantic Ocean, East and Pacific Ocean at the West. This is, uh, this particular canal is constructed in Panama. Uh, it is constructed across Panama Isthmus. So what is mean by Isthmus here? Isthmus is a narrow water, narrow landmass, that particular narrow landmass divide the two water bodies so this is narrow landmass panama is a these are the uh, narrow landmass so this particular narrow landmass divide the two water bodies atlantic ocean and pacific ocean so that is called isthmus so this particular canal is constructed across panama uh, isthmus we know what is mean by it's isthmus between two city they are colon they are colon and panama so these are the two terminal stations of that particular port who built means USA built that particular canal in order to connect eastern uh, coast of USA with western coast of USA. The total length of this particular shipping canal is about 72 km and depth is 13 meter in depth. White width of this capital and this particular canal is 100 to 300 and it has six lock system so lock system means gate system so since this particular sea <coughs> canal is not a sea level canal 
because of that they have made six lock system three up and three down in order to pass a ship from atlantic ocean to pacific ocean at the west and from pacific ocean at the west to atlantic ocean at the east because of that they had they made six lock system because this is not a sea level canal so it shortened the distance between new york and san francisco by uh, 13 km as compared to old sea route so this particular sea route is less economically significant as compared to swiss canal so this is the map of uh, this particular red line shows swiss canal route swiss canal route this is the uh, this yellow line indicates where the swiss canal is constructed so this particular canal is constructed in egypt so here we have atlantic ocean here we have pacific ocean so in order to connect uh, atlantic ocean with pacific ocean we have six lock system one two three one two three so we have six lock system in order to move from atlantic ocean to pacific up three up three down reverse three up three down so these are called lock system also means gear system so here <coughs> I have a um, uh, short video. That particular video tries to explain about um, <coughs> the working system or model of how Panama Canal works. So uh, please have a look at uh, the, um, this video clip. A canal connects two bodies of water that may have different water levels. Ships traveling through the canal move from one water level to another through a lock, a rectangular chamber with watertight gates at each end. In the lock, the level of water can be raised and lowered by a system of valves and water passages. Suppose a ship is traveling from the higher water level to the lower. First, an operator at a nearby station opens the lock gates at the high end. The ship enters the lock and the lock gates are closed. Next, the lock operator opens one or more valves so that water from the lock slowly drains into the lower section of the canal. When the water in the lock is level with the lower water, the operator opens the gates and the ship sails through. To move a ship upstream, the procedure is reversed. Thank you.